What's up, everybody? Graver and Arlene here, and we're going to be working on some Halloween costumes for my kids. Yay! So, yeah. I'm very excited because this is the first real costuming thing we've done in quite some time, yeah. and because it's the children. I'm yes. I'm very excited. I love doing projects for them. And they've chosen their Roblox characters. Yes, both my son and daughter are in love with Roblox and play it all the time. Uh, especially with their friends, because that's all they, apparently that's all kids do now. So. Hey, when you're stuck inside, kind of the best way to still interact with the people that you, that you might miss. True. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making a pair of wings and a halo for my son, because that's what his character has. We will input a, a photo. Yes. <laughs> for, for reference. Yes, so... And then, uh, my daughter, we're going to be making a foxtail. Yes. And everything's going to be made out of foam of some way, shape, or form, because that's what we do. Yes. So. No, so we're very excited. Um, we already got started on the wings, because I, I've been planning this for a while. Ever since they told me the characters they wanted to do, and I've just recently moved into a house. So, putting together my whole crafting area... My brain already started moving, and I have had these plans for quite some time. Yes, the plans have been motion for quite some time. So I jumped the gun a little bit, but we'll kind of walk you guys yeah. through the whole process. And yeah, nothing, nothing too major. Honestly, it's mostly prep work and stuff you've kind of seen us do before. But the, we'll the boring stuff that you guys don't want to see. Yeah, anyways, we'll still, we'll so. still explain what's been done when we actually start working on it, which yeah. is sitting behind us. So <laughs> we'll go to the overhead and. Let's Start showing you what we got. Jump into it. Okay. All right. So uh, I just started off by taping a whole bunch of standard printer paper together and then took the reference photo that Pete was wonderful enough to provide us and just sketched out our lovely wing pattern here. Uh, we also made sure to put uh, the pattern up against his son already uh just to make sure that the proportions looked right um and that he's not going to be hitting too many people from the side profile view <laughs> yeah as he walks forward um yes the the wings aren't going to be a one-to-one -one for the character because if anyone has ever played roblox you will know that uh proportions are completely inaccurate and time is a flat circle so <laughs> so essentially here we sketched out the wing made sure that we gave it when we put it up against the sun uh we were able to make sure that it was appropriate size but it was still looked enough like yeah. the actual drawing so uh once we sketched it out which i was surprised i was able to do so well freehand gonna give myself some props there uh now we just have it pinned down against our 10 inch or 10 millimeter foam, 10 inch, God, can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, God. Our 10 millimeter foam, um, it's a 40 inches tall. That'd be like almost like that thing. <laughs> no, it is only 10 millimeters. Um, so yeah, we got, it's 40 by what's, how long is this? No, it's 40 long, sorry. Yeah. So I only did half. I made sure that the paper was only 20 inches across. That way we we're just going to flip this over and then do the mirror side just to make things a little bit more even and easier on ourselves. Also, I do apologize. I have reopened the garage door so that we get some nice fresh air and circulation at the shop. So, but also because it's nice, people are doing yard work. Thank you very much. So we're just going to put uh, music over this part while, since this pattern's now pinned down, we're just going to go over it with a marker and then we'll flip it outline it there and then cut it out yep pretty i gotta, pretty basic I gotta get my money's worth out of epidemic sound <laughs> all right let's get going
trying to balance everything after our lovely shopping trip. Um, so we got this lovely high density foam. I think this is what, uh, two? Yeah, this is two inches thick. Um, we just kind of got a scrap that they had. Uh, so we were able to actually get a little bit of a discount on the pricing. We're going to chop this into thirds, glue it together to give us the thickness for the tail. Um, and what I'm really excited about is that uh, back, I want to say three Christmases ago, uh, we can look back through our lovely video uh, uh, inventory, I guess. What's that? Video inventory? Yeah. You call it? All right. So looking back into our video inventory about three years ago, uh, we made a sword for our friend Andrew and uh, from Final Fantasy VIII. Eight. <laughs> uh, you can tell I know so much about the subject. Uh, no. So while we were doing that, uh, carving the sword, I found it was very difficult because we were trying to use a handsaw to shape the foam that we were using. And just wasn't going the way we wanted and I was like why don't we have a hot wire tool of something um so finally I had an excuse to buy this electric foam cutting toolkit which was only 30 bucks on Amazon and it has just really awesome just like a pen tool for like finer details and then a larger wire tool to make those long straight cuts which will be very helpful with shaping this lovely tail so I'm going to be cutting this foam into three slabs rubber cementing them together. We tested the rubber cement on the corner here to make sure it did not melt the foam. We have had that issue in the past before, depending on the material. While uh, James is outside with the lovely screaming children, uh, uh, plaster dipping all of the, uh, the the wings that we had previously made. And then he will be plaster dipping this as well once we actually get the form all set and done. So I'm gonna get started on that. Awesome. So, was able to glue all three pieces together. We were originally going to use rubber cement, uh, but it was just far too goopy to try and like smear <laughs> across foam because the foam obviously is trying to absorb all that extra moisture. So we ended up going with uh, what was it called? Uh, Super seventy seven. Super seventy seven, um, and it's holding quite nicely. It's a very thin spray layer. Um, and so now comes the fun part of carving it with my fun little hot tool. Uh, we started a hot tool with this, and it cut beautifully. By the way, you left this in the sun. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in a rushed state right now. <laughs> uh, so we started off with this, and it cut beautifully, um, but it was just going to take too long. Or not too long, but it, because it was so thick and going in that direction... Um, we decided to just go with a regular handsaw, um, but now we can do all the fine detailing and sculpting with this. I don't know if you guys can really see that in the camera, because I am shining and reflecting all of the light in that direction. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get started on that. I'm probably not going to film it though, because uh, my back's going to be to you guys the whole time anyways. So yeah, and as progress for James, he's just about done plastic dipping the wings. So we should be getting to painting those because it's a nice bright sunny day as you can tell. Um, <laughs> so we should, that should be able to dry pretty quick and essentially have those done. Uh, we're good. I already have a harness idea set up because we're going to kind of put it on this backpack, but we'll show you that process when we get to it.
Uh, it's end of day one-ish. Yeah. Sort of. So, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, the wings are plastidipped and ready for paint. Uh, the halo is as well for the most part. Uh, just a little touch up. For some reason, there was an odd spot on the ring that was yeah. just not. Taken. Any kind of porous material, it's going to cause problems, which is where we're at with the tail. We got the shaping done. Yes. But. But, <laughs> but we didn't realize while it was a nice, dense foam, it's also a very spongy foam. So. To, James was wonderful enough to do some testing while I was continuing to carve. Yes. So, I don't know what a test piece it's is. Over there. Oh, okay. No, it's not. This is the other one. Oh, oh here it is. Aha! Aha. There's a foam all over the shop. Yes, there is. The <laughs> shop is a mess, more than normal. But, yes, so we did a little bit of testing on it. Uh, this side was, I just put some. Mod Podge down, and then once and hit it with a heat gun to help dry it quicker, and then went over it with just quick with some uh, plastic dip. Thank you. And I mean, it took, but not as great. This side I had tested where I sprayed some plastic dip just to see how much it sucked in. By the way, this is where it was. Mod Podged over that, hit it with the heat gun, dried that, then I hit it with uh, a second a layer. second coat of plastic dip, and it did come out better. But I think this is going to be something that's just going to take some time. So right now my plan is going to be, because we have a giant tub of it now, uh, I'm just going to paint the whole, cover the whole thing in plastic, in, plastic, in Mod Podge, let that dry overnight. Put another layer of Mod Podge over it, let that dry overnight, put a third layer on it, and then hopefully it will be good enough that I can start hitting it with the Plasti Dip to get that coating over it and it look good. So. Well, now it's just a matter of drying time, so yeah. I can go home, allow the Mod Podge to cure for, what, four weeks it said? Oh my god, the cure time on this Mod Podge says... Four weeks. I'm it's, assuming that's a full cure, and I don't think we need a full cure. Yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. So, yeah. Uh, so he's going to work on that while I'm at home working on some other Halloween projects that yes. I don't know if they'll see before or after. Yes, we'll, one way or another. Yes, Arlena's going to be making videos. I, I, I know, now I have a house. Yes. And I have a workspace. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. So, yeah, uh, none of it's for me. I want to specify that it's uh, for my wonderful friend Rob. Uh, you guys will see more on that. Um, yeah. his, that's m mostly a costume sewing. So if you guys are more into prop building, this video is probably for you, and part two of it will yeah. be, um, or whatever we decide. Sorry, with the garage door, we get bugs in here. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the other video will be more actual costuming, sewing, and patterning yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, because so, uh, I'm gonna be busy this Halloween for everybody else. I'm just going to use stuff that's in my closet that I still have yet to wear. So that that's perfect. Yes. Yeah. The, the issue with wanting to make all of your costumes, you get too many and then don't have a place to wear them all. That's why. Anyways, so yes. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if this is going to be in the part one or just... We're going into the next part of it, but either way... Well, you, you can see in the time stamp. Yeah. If this is somewhere in the middle of the video... All right. So we're on to day two. Um, I'm back. <laughs> day two, 14 days later. <laughs> So, uh, essentially, we found this cool clip. Where did this clip come from? I don't remember. I think that might have actually come from one of the kids' old car seats. Okay. Well, and it has a nice snap in the middle. comes apart. So, we're going to use this for the chest piece, essentially, of the wings. So, we're going to have the straps come across, crisscross across the back, and then come down through here to just snap on and off pretty damn easy. 
so we already measured the child. We uh, gave ourselves a little bit of extra inches on either band so that we can, uh, can adjust accordingly. Um, so now we're just going to essentially take the middles, uh, want to contact cement, or... I'm trying to remember, how did we do it on the uh, chest plate? I want to say we contact cemented. I thought we hot glued that. I thought we... Uh... We're going to look back at our video. <laughs> Nope, that's hot glue. Around the edges. That is contact cement. That looks like hot glue. I think you hot glued around the edges. No, look, there's hot glue underneath it. No, that's just the sides. Oh, maybe it is. No, I see it here. You're right. You're right. I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong. I was wrong. All right. You heard it here first, folks. Oh, trust me. That's not the first. I, I constantly am wrong. I know, but usually I'm more wrong than right on the channel. So. <laughs> or at least when you're filming. Or at least when you're here filming. So. Aww. <laughs> All right. So for these, essentially, I'm just putting the uh, strap that's going to be underneath his arm through these loops first. And then the upper one will just go over top of that through here. That way he doesn't have this bottom strap. The tightening will happen underneath, so it's not kind of just flapping in the wind. And the bottom one will just stick out like that. And these will just be hidden under here. And then you can tighten or loosen as necessary. I'm just weak. <laughs> there we go. And then when Tom comes time to actually put it on, just puts his arms through each of these loops and buckles. And done. Nice and easy. Okay, so for part of my daughter Sam's costume is she has these cat ears on headphones that or box ears, whatever, that she her character wears. So this is going to get a similar paint treatment like everything else is getting, but the sides of it are a little different because these headphones I got for like five bucks at five below have this little black glittered stuff on the side which her character's headphones don't but so what i'm doing is just roughing up one side with a little bit of 220 sandpaper to just kind of 
give paint a little bite to go onto it because if not it's literally just this really clear smooth acrylic so just a little 220 sandpaper knocking it down a little bit and hopefully that will be enough to get the uh paint to stick so we'll see how this looks in a few So, for the most part, uh, the kids' Halloween costumes are finally done. Yay! So, a lot of work has went into them, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, some work still needs to be done, but that's just easy stuff that I can always take care of. But uh, you'll see the cut-ins of the final products now. But yeah, Sam's foxtail is all done and double-strapped. Uh, Pete's wings are done. Uh... Pete's halo's done. Yeah, Pete's and halo's done. And the ears. And the ears and headphones that Sam's character has are also done. And ooh, just a little quick side note because she has the swords. <laughs> These swords are also done as well. Um, I had like a little paint bleed here, but obviously it's it is what it is. <laughs> it's for one night, and the kids seem to really love them, which yes. is all I care about is that they're happy with. Yeah, so the kids are very happy with how their costumes came out. So hopefully this has taught y'all uh, how to do some things, either the giant foam tail, which I think in hindsight next time. We'll... Yes, we're, we have some thoughts. One, liquid latex maybe. Yeah, or uh, flex seal. <laughs> um, also maybe if, uh, I don't know about material, like what else we could use, but we do have... Another fox-like creature sometime in the future. Yes. So we'll get to that when we get yeah, there. So but this was a nice, I, you know, starter to... Yeah, to so everything that we kind of learned in this one, we could apply to that one. So that'll be fun. And the wings came out perfect. Yes. I'm kind of in shock, not going to lie. <laughs> um, yeah, they, honestly, they were so simplistic, we were surprised how easily it worked. Because you know how often we mess things up. And yes. Okay. Remember, it's always it's always a good plan until it isn't. Give credit where credit is due. Yes, I stole that from many a true nerd, so thank you very much, John, for that one. <laughs> All right, and but, I think that's it for, for this Halloween. Yes, this little Halloween extravaganza. So thank you all very much for joining us, and as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, throw us a like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think, how these came out, or what did you do for Halloween. Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to click that little bell icon, otherwise you may not know when we're doing our silliness here on the channel. And don't forget, we have a P.O. box, so make your mailman do a little extra work or something, I don't know. Yeah, all the little interactions that you guys do, one, we read every single comment, and we yes. appreciate all of the likes, all of the subscribes, it really helps us out and keeps us motivated to, you know, exactly. kind of keep going. We're happy yeah. to make content for you guys. Yeah. So, again, thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Later.